I kind of want to do something different here. I want to do a relegation checkup on two <laughs> leagues, specifically okay. the Premier League and La Liga. Yeah. Let's check in on the worst teams in that league, how they're looking, and what it will be like to see those teams actually get relegated at the end of the season. For La Liga, the bottom three teams after today, Monday, the 3rd of April, as of today, the bottom three in La Liga is Elche with 13 points, and they are 100% going to get relegated. 100%. Just lost to Barcelona 4-0. It was terrible. Mm. Terrible. 19th place, Almería with 27 points. Espanyol in 18th with 27 points as well. Valencia in 17th out of the relegation zone technically, but they also have 27 points. Ooh, it's tight. Very tight. Valladolid with 28. Cadiz with 28. <laughs> this shit's tight, man. And then Getafe at 30. And I think that's where I'll cut it off for now. God, <laughs> but it's crazy. There's that a three, is crazy. That's a three tight. point difference right there. Um, ridiculous how close it is between, I would say, 13th place and 19th place in La Liga. Yep. But let me throw out, out of these names, you tell me which would be the biggest one to get relegated Almeria, Espanol, Valencia, Real Valladolid, Cadiz, Getafe, Sevilla. Which of those teams would be the biggest one, biggest team name to get relegated? What point is it, Sevilla at? They're in 13th place with 31 points. So they're oh only my four points God. off. Dude, yeah. Yeah. Oh it's actually wildly God. close. It's a race, baby. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've given up on Spanish football this year. <laughs> um, definitely Sevilla thing. because, I mean, they were Europa League kings not too long ago. And then even then, they've been somewhat competitive in the Champions League over the last three, four years. This year has been an absolute disaster, though. I don't see any semblance of their past selves, even like three, four years ago. It's labored type of football. It's pretty unimaginative when they're going forward, and it's incredibly predictable, bro. And then defensively, what usually had kept them always okay, they've just been, they haven't been able to just get clean sheets. They haven't been able to see out draws or just see out their games. And Sevilla just look really poor this season, bro. They look really poor. But again, because of their mid 2010s history, for them to go down would be pretty big, yeah. man. That'd be a big one. That'd be a big one. I saw the uh, Valencia against um, Rayo Vallecano game today, yeah. which is just a crazy script to watch because here we are seeing Vallecano going into this match as a potential European nominee mm. uh, vying for sixth or fifth place in La Liga and Valencia fighting for their lives to stay alive. The game was at home in Valencia. And my whole thought process throughout the game was just kind of imagining what would La Liga look like without Valencia? Because I've never seen a La Liga experience without them in it. Their emblem, their logo to me is so iconic. Their jerseys, that black and white look. And then their stadium, a very nice stadium. One of my more favorite ones yeah. in Spain right now. And often being a team that's you know vying for like a top six spot in La Liga. They're alongside Sevilla, always been really good about being competitive and being a Spanish team that you know has some incentive, is willing to try, is willing to challenge the top teams in the league such as Real Madrid or uh, Barcelona. So to me, after watching them today, I'm like, bro, if they were to go down, that would be embarrassing. Embarrassing because likewise, like Sevilla, very unexpected first and foremost because of the squads that they have. Because yeah. if you were to look at these rosters prior to the season starting, I don't think there was any reason to think that they were relegation level, especially Sevilla's, man. That squad is way too good to be at the level that they're at right now. But Valencia, likewise, man. So to see them get relegated, I think would be a big, big embarrassment and big catastrophe overall for not just them, but I, I do think Spanish football. They, I, in a way, I don't think they should let Valencia get relegated. <laughs> They're too big of a club for me, man. I, yeah. I think I just have a, too much of an affinity for them personally. Yeah, Valencia pissed me off, man. They, they've been on such a huge decline, I'd say, since 2019. That was the last like competitive, truly competitive and fun squad to watch. Now they're, dude, they're so boring. They're so <laughs> boring to watch, bro. Yeah. They're really, really bad and would not be surprised if they get relegated, but the name of Valencia, as you said, bro, that actually would be nuts. Yeah, yeah That'd it, be nuts. But you know what's crazy is that a little over a decade ago, Villarreal got relegated. That is pretty crazy. Yeah. And then, you know, what was it? Last year, they were in a Champions League semifinal. Yeah. So there is a path to redemption. It just there is. might take a decade. There is. <laughs> there definitely is uh, 
it's just funny like how they're here amongst like teams that are like born and bred for the relegation battle and have been here for years like a Hitafe for example yeah, bro. like I'd be so confident as a Hitafe fan right now that you're fucking good yeah. man you're good this is what you're used to this is what you do um Valencia themselves, very boring offensively with Cavani up front being an absolute That's nightmare. Right, but the one play that stood out to me, honestly, out of their whole team was, uh, I think his name is Kluivert, the Dutchman. He's uh, on loan from Roma right now. He's the son of a famous Dutch player. Yeah. Dude's got skill on the ball, and he's hella quick with it. And if anything, he's one of the few players for Valencia who has any sort of fight or passion for the game right now. They drew a penalty at one point to uh, tie the game up against Rayo Vallecano, and it was nice to see Kluivert, you know, essentially fight to take the penalty. He was, like, asking the guy with the ball, like, hey, let me let me get a shot at this. Like, I I want to score this goal. And he stepped up and scored a class of a penalty. Oh, nice. Man. It was beautiful to nice. see. Tie the game up, but it was so just random and weird and rare to see amidst this crop of players that are so uninspiring, so slow, and... Overall, just very dry on the ball, if that's the way to describe oh, it, man. Yeah. This team is dead, dead, dude. So, I think that'd be an interesting team to see relegated, and maybe Espanol as well. Yeah, seeing Espanol get relegated, I think, would be super frustrating if you're like an Espanol fan, man, because you've had decent amount of players, or even recently over the past couple of years. Mark Roca was in the team at one point. Sergi Darder has put in some really good minutes and just really good seasons. You've had Borja Iglesias at one point, man. Like, there was talent in this side, but it's amounted to nothing. And then now they're in this relegation battle where relegation yeah. looks very, very possible. Yeah. And they have a nice facility. I love their stadium. I love their yeah. colors, bro. And for them to go down to the second div, it'd be a shame. Be a shame. It, it would be, it'd be a fucking shame quickly predict the the final three relegation who do you think how do you think it's going to end this season Fuck. i'll go with elche obviously at number 20 right in 19th uh, yeah i do think almeria just doesn't have anywhere near the experience or the quality of players to be able to withstand the pressure that's coming for them in these next 10 games so i'll go almeria and lastly i do think i'm going to throw in valencia in 17th i think espanol gets away with it right now That'd because be nice. they do have some ballers up front that are scoring a lot of goals for them Whereas Valencia, just offensively, there's nothing going for them outside yeah. of, like I said, Cleavert. So I'm going to go Valencia on 17th. Yeah, obviously I'll go Elche. Um, I'm going to throw in Almeria too, but my third team is going to be Valladolid. Ah, yeah. I'm going Valladolid. Okay. Um, for the last, I'm going to say two, maybe even three years, Valladolid's offense has pissed me off more than any other La Liga team. And so I have a little vendetta against them, and I hope to see them in the second no, division no, next don't year. Say no, that, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go ahead and don't say, say that, man. They're one of the few purple teams across all of Europe. <laughs> That's true, though. They have a dope. Their color stadium. is nice. Yeah, bro. their color is really that. nice. Don't say that, man. <laughs> That'd be crazy if Valladolid, Valencia, and Espanol got relegated because they would each have a Concacaf player. <laughs> Uh, Yunus Musa, Valencia. All right. Cesar Montes uh, over Espanol, mm -hmm. and then uh, Kyle Aaron. At, uh, oh, that's right. League. That's right. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that'd be, that would not be a good look for us. No. Oh shit. That would suck. Yeah. Especially Musa, just for me personally. That <laughs> yeah. would suck. Yeah, dude. absolutely. He'd have to move. No, he would move. He'd you leave. You think so? You think so? He'd I, leave. Alongside Cleavert, probably? Yeah, why not? See, yeah, both of them get out of there. Get out of there, yeah. Musa. If that's the case, get out of Actually, even if that's not the case, I don't want to see him in another relegation battle. Yeah. Get out of there, dude. Yeah. Um, okay, so same thing. I want to do the same thing real quickly, but for the Premier League right mm. now. 20th place, we have Southampton with 23 points. Leicester at 19th with 25 points. Leeds in 18th place with 26 points. Burnmouth in 17th place with 27 points. Nottingham Forest in 16th with 27 points. Everton in 15th with 27 points. Oh West Ham in 14th with 27 dude. points. Oh my God. Wolves Let's in go. 13th with 28 points. Yep. Crystal Palace in 12th place with 30 points. And that's where I'll cut it off. Oh my God. So about eight nine teams in the relegation battle realistically right now dude predicting that's like winning the lottery bro <laughs> you can't predict that three three so, i think you could predict southampton i think southampton e just even then if they just went two in a row i know but it's like, crazy my, but yeah so i right now i'm gonna go ahead and say southampton gets relegated simply because they just cannot click offensively consistently enough mm -hmm. and i mean consistently for a relegation side bro okay. like they can't even do that and it's frustrating, man, because 
you know, they have some good players. Salisu, I think, is a good, solid player that should still be playing yes. in the Premier League. If they get relegated, he's got to go. Yeah. Romeo Lavia, I think, has a lot of Baller. potential. I think he has so much potential. Get him out of there, you know? <laughs> Uh, Ward Prowse, Ward Prowse, right? He exactly. Has to go. oh, this He's got to go, he has man. To this has to be it. And so there is talent there, and that's why it's frustrating to see them at the bottom of the goddamn table. But yeah, I mean, just as a whole, as a unit, their offense does not work. So I think they are going to get relegated. Yeah, uh, I think the way it stands right now is the way I think it's going to end with Southampton, Leicester, and Leeds. Leeds, for uh, as feisty as they've been, yeah, man. man. They are they are just not clicking. Doesn't matter who's managing them. Mm. They just have not been able to match the energy of their first initial Premier League season under Bielsa. Since then, that second year under him, and then the the Jesse Marsh era, none of it has worked out for them. They just cannot gain any sort of consistency. And I, I just think I think they have they need to move on from several players, man. Luke Ayling had a yeah. woeful game against Arsenal this weekend. I saw that. And I'm surprised he's, he's been at this club for a long time now. Yeah. Might be time to move on from this club legend, honestly. Yeah. And likewise, make other moves like Melier. I've never been convinced by his goalkeeping prowess as well. Players up front like Rodrigo, I think, are a little confusing. Aronson has been a little off. Be a little critical. No, absolutely. Hasn't lived up to that thirty million dollar fee. Uh, likewise, Weston McKinney isn't even starting for them right now. It's <laughs> it's really bad usage of the personnel that they have and also just trying to find a good mix, uh, some good chemistry to work with to make them a successful team in this cutthroat league. And then Leicester, bro, I've been harping on Leicester dude, for Leicester, a dude. while. Yeah. And, a, and just like our talk about coaches getting fired, man, Brendan Rodgers finally getting the boot during the international break, a day I never thought I'd see, bro. Dude, it's taking so I long. I never thought I'd see it. Because I've been saying Brendan Rodgers out for so long, bro. Yeah. Probably since the beginning, the inception of this podcast. And he somehow found a way to stick around this fucking long, dude. Nah. And it's come probably at the worst time because they're now at 25 points in 19th place. The transfers that they've gotten in haven't truly been game-changing outside of maybe Sutar. And I just kind of wish Leicester had more incentive, had more fight in their game. But these players look like they've given up, man. Especially in that match against Crystal Palace this past weekend, Brendan Rodgers' last game prior to getting fired. They looked absolutely uninspired. No fight whatsoever. The guys were just robots out there. Robots. Despite scoring a banger of a goal to somehow get in the lead 1-0. After that, Crystal Palace just slowly chipped away at the game. Got the lead, and they held it just fine. There was no threat. There was no worry when it came to Leicester scoring yeah. any sort of important goals. And so I think this Leicester team needs to rejuvenate itself. And low-key, I think they need to go to the championship, man. They've been on a downhill slope ever since that incredible title they won in 2015-2016. And they just haven't found a way to kind of pick themselves back up, man. Yeah. Going from champions to like top six contenders for a while, to then top ten, mid-table, and now ending it with relegation. So... That's how I have it. Southampton, Leicester, and Leeds. What are yours? Yeah, uh, so definitely Southampton, as I already kind of pointed out. You know, it's interesting. Both Leicester and Leeds, I think, are very similar in the sense that over the past couple of years especially, they've compensated their lack in quality with trying to just have a lot of energy out on the pitch. And it does work to an extent. As you already said, that first season where Leeds just flew as high as they could for a debut season after a long period outside of the Premier League, it was you know fairly successful. And they didn't have the personnel. They were still using a decent amount of players from the championship for the, their Premier League opponents, man. But how did they compensate for it? They just ran. And they ran nonstop. They tried to close down as much space as they could, as quickly as they could. And then when they got the ball, it was... Go, penetrate, do whatever you can, get to the box within two, three passes, penetrate, dribble. And it was really entertaining to see. The thing is, when it stops working, you're almost running for nothing. It can get incredibly demoralizing because it, you're just tired at the end of the game yeah. and you still lose 3-0. Yeah. So this is like, what, what, what space am I covering? If I, if I cover this and my teammate's not helping me out here by you know, having like a Luke Ailing type of moment yeah. where he just fluffs at the ball. Yeah. It's really frustrating. And then at that point, again, kind of like Leeds and Leicester, they've had a lot of signings in these past couple of transfer windows, but I feel like they're just throwing players at the problem without trying to build a team that has chemistry. So I think you get the product of what you see now. Leeds and Leicester right in the relegation zone. 
I think Southampton and Leeds will get relegated. <sighs> early in the season, you said Leicester back early. I remember I looked back on some of our podcasts and yeah. I asked you this question and you said yes back then. Yeah. And they're still primed for that right now. They're still now. primed for it. You don't want to stick with that prediction? I, I think I, I think for the prediction, I'll stick for it. But how? I, I, okay, yeah. Okay, I'll stick with that. But just for conversation purposes, how crazy would it be if we're end end of the season, two games left, and like West Ham or Everton are right there? How crazy would that be? Either one of them got involved. I think it'd be, especially Everton. Yeah. They've been in this league for, I think it was almost 100 years. I think, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> that is a staple of the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that would be complete embarrassment. Yes. More than any other team, I think. I don't know. I wonder, does it compare to Sevilla? Does it compare? I think, I, 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 for me, it's just the fact that they've been here for so long. That's what they gets are, me. Their history. Yeah. I don't know if it's embarrassing, but it would just be, it would be a hit. To like the Premier League's just, you know, overall um, yeah, like the, the legacy. history, yeah, like the legacy. legacy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't want Everton to get relegated yeah. because of that. Like Sevilla, I'm kind of fine with that. <laughs> but, but Everton, I don't want to see them go down. I just don't. I don't even know what that would look like, bro. Everton in the Championship, bro. That's not right. Whoa, it's not yeah, right. Whoa, yeah. We gotta have those games at Goodison Park every yeah. single year in the Prem, bro. So I, I think it'd be really, really sad more than anything if Everton were to get relegated. Dude, if, fucking, if West Ham got relegated, they would have the most insane second division stadium in yeah. history. See, though. that would be embarrassing. <laughs> if West that one's Ham a, that one's get relegated, that's embarrassing because of what you said. Their facility, the money that yeah, they have that, just that's... invested into the club, their squad. Bro, Paqueta's there, man. <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he went to a second division side, bro. <laughs> Jeez, There's no fucking man. way. Like that would be that one would be truly uh, remarkable if I saw that happen. Yeah, yeah. I, if I really would be so disappointed because I feel like they're kind of still trying to figure out the slump they got themselves into at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. Like this is just an after effect of that, yeah. and they just still can't figure it out. It's like if you have a hangover and it keeps going on for like another month. You're just like, <laughs> like damn, bro. What do I gotta bro, do? I can't snap out of it, dude. <laughs> yeah. I can't. You're just like, shit. Something's wrong then. Yeah, something's wrong. I think that's what's going on with them because they were great last year. They've been great the past couple of years, honestly. With the talent that they have and the money and the stadium, this to me would be probably one of the biggest disappointments in recent memory when it comes to relegation. So. I am going to be rooting for that. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see that, man. I love yeah. some late relegation drama, brother. Yeah. And, I, you know, just, just to go on record, I could see Nottingham Forest or Bournemouth just dropping at the end, but only if either one of Leeds or Leicester find a bit of form. Bournemouth have tried really hard to stay competitive and to stay in this league, and Nottingham Forest have spent so much goddamn money to try and stay in this league. They're both trying in their own yep. separate ways. Yep. But I could just see the inexperience coming into play and them getting relegated right at the death, finishing in like 18th place. But again, I think that's more on whether Leicester or Leeds find form. Yeah, I, I completely disagree. I have a different agenda uh, 100%. Nottingham Forest, Bournemouth will stay up because my agenda this season, though I haven't revealed it, is that I do think that the teams that got, that got promoted this year are going to stay in the Prem. Uh, yeah. All three. Didn't you I say that it. a while ago? I feel like I did, bro. <laughs> I feel like you did. I feel like I did this early familiar. on this year. Like early. Yeah. 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 And I want to see it fucking happen, man. To see three teams that were established in the Premier League, especially in Leicester and, and Southampton, yeah. uh, get knocked out, would make me so happy. <laughs> would make me so happy.